David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Uh, today I have for you a brand new exciting pen from Visconti. Uh, Visconti makes some pretty visually stunning pens, and what I will be going over today is one that definitely fits into that category. That pen is the Visconti Watermark Rainbow. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Watermark Rainbow, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to Visconti and Coles of London, their U.S. distributor, for providing this pen on loan for review. And here is the pen. This is the Visconti Watermark Rainbow. Uh, the Watermark is the next in the long line of Visconti pens with a cutout filigree design. Uh, it's something that Visconti has done repeatedly in a number of variations dating back to their Uffizi model, released back in 1993. Um, it's named the watermark because the pattern on this pen is the Visconti logo. So it's likened to a watermark that you might see on an important document or a picture. Uh, the filigree here is cut out from a solid tube of sterling silver, and according to Visconti, it requires over 20 manual operations to reach the final status. It has this amazing rainbow pattern on the pen called an avonial iridium coating. Uh, it's a PVD treatment on the silver. PVD stands for Physical Vapor Deposition. Now, describing PVD as a coating is a bit of misnomer. Um, it doesn't add a substantial layer of coating to the metal. Uh, it's translucent, and it changes the physical properties of the surface of the metal itself with a very minute buildup. Uh, it kind of creates more of a surface condition rather than a coating, and the end result is just beautiful. Um, there'll be color and pattern variations on each model, so every pen is going to be unique. Now, this coloring looks a little bit somewhat like that of the Montegrappa Fortuna Blazer, which had a similar rainbow pattern, but for that particular pen, it was achieved through a heat treatment on stainless steel as opposed to a treatment on sterling silver. Under the overlay is a translucent resin body, which enables you to get a really good look at the nib and section through the cap, and acts as a large ink window on the barrel as well. Um, let's take a closer look at the Watermark Rainbow, starting with the cap. Uh, the end of the cap is rounded and adorned with the Visconti logo. Uh, this pen does not utilize Visconti's My Pen system, so you can't change this piece out. But then again, with it looking this cool, no one in their right mind is going to want to trade it out anyways. Uh, near the top of the cap are the maker's marks, demonstrating that this is in fact sterling silver. Uh, the clip is Visconti's traditional hinged design. What I like about this specific model is that one side of the clip has more of the purple and blue and gold treatment, and the majority of the other side is gold with just a hint of purple and blue at the tip of the clip. Uh, as I mentioned previously, the coloring and pattern on each pen will, it will be unique, so if you should pick one of these up, it may or may not look the same. Uh, the cap is straight. And at the end, there's a pseudo cap band engraved with watermark. Uh, there is a rounded step down to the barrel, and the barrel is straight, and at the end of the barrel, there is a piston knob. Uh, a couple of things about this picture here. First of all, you can see another set of maker's marks on the barrel, since the barrel is actually a separate piece of sterling silver, then separate marks are required. Uh, the other thing is that I really love the transition between the barrel and the piston knob, uh, with a little purple band of color. Uh, the end of the piston knob is slightly rounded and contains the limited edition number for the pen. Uh, this is a limited edition of 888 pens. The cap twists off to reveal my favorite thing about this pen, which is an absolutely stunningly colored nib. This pen is available in a number of nib sizes, uh, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and 1.3 millimeter stubs. Now, Visconti is transitioning from their 23 karat palladium nibs to 18 karat gold ones. So depending on your retailer of choice, there might be varying combinations of gold and palladium nibs available in the different sizes. This one particular one here is an 18 karat gold. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, this incredible looking section is concave and transitions into some very cool looking threads. And then there is an ink window and a small step up onto the barrel. 
Now, even though this section is metal, I don't find it to be slick or slippery. I can really maintain a decent grip with this pen. Um, the threads are metal as well, and I don't find them to be sharp. And in fact, if your grip rests a bit further back and on the section itself uh, and happens to rest on the threads, I do find that they really help lock your grip in place. Um, this pen utilizes Visconti's double reservoir power filling system. Uh, it is a vacuum filler. Uh, in order to fill this pen, you actually unscrew the piston knob and pull it back. And then you take a look at this. Uh, even the piston rod has been given the rainbow treatment. Uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, the first time I noticed that, it was just a cool little surprise. But what you do then is you immerse the nib in the bottled ink of your choice and you push down on this piston until you hear this little noise right there. And at that point in time, ink will be sucked up into the barrel. Then what you do is you twist down on the piston knob and it actually creates a seal in between the forward ink chamber here and the larger ink chamber in the back. Um, the, uh, that's the purpose of this forward ink window. It gives you a look into your ink situation in that chamber. Uh, when you're running low on ink, you simply unscrew the piston knob, which will break the seal and ink will flow from the barrel into the forward chamber and then you close it and you're back in business. Uh, it's a system that works very well. I have it on a number of pens. Uh, the retail price for the Visconti watermark is just under $2,000, $1,995. Uh, if you purchase this pen through an authorized dealer, then the price will be about 20% less. Um, that is a serious price for a pen, but in my opinion, uh, this is one of the most eye-catchingly beautiful models Visconti has ever produced. Um, if you're in the market for a pen in this price range, the watermark is something I would strongly consider. Uh, the new 18 karat gold nibs are outstanding. Um, this filigree pattern is very interesting and the color palette on this pen is eye-catching and in my opinion extremely beautiful. Uh, there is a great deal to like about this pen. Uh, thanks again go out to Visconti and Coles of London for providing this pen on loan for review. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Visconti Watermark Rainbow. First of all, here it is with a Visconti Blue Ripple, another pen with that filigree pattern. Uh, then here it is with a Homo Sapiens Magma. And then finally, a pen that you will see reviewed here in the somewhat near future is another brand new release from Visconti, which is something to celebrate their 30th anniversary, which is the Voyager 30, uh, which is a very nice pen that is made from ebonite. Uh, it just has some really nice coloring to it, and we will definitely take a closer look at this pen in the somewhat near future. And that is what it looks like compared to the watermark rainbow. In regard to some non-Visconti pens, here it is with a Lamy Safari, uh, here it is with a Mont Blanc 146, and then here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point Raiden water surface. Uh, the uh, Raiden pattern on here kind of reminded me of the rainbow pattern on this pen, but this is one of my favorite vanishing points that I have, and that is what it looks like in comparison to the Visconti. Here we go with the writing sample for the Visconti. Uh, watermark. Rainbow. This is a fine 18 karat gold nib. And the ink that I'm using today is Visconti. Uh, turquoise. Uh, this is one of my favorite turquoises. Uh, I just think it's kind of very nicely saturated. Uh, here's what it looks like in regard to Lamy Pacific Blue. Uh, and then also with Pelican Turquoise. That's not the greatest swatch there, but Pelican Turquoise is still a nice color. But I do like the Visconti Turquoise, and it has some, uh, some nice coloration 
to the ink. Uh, this is what the bottles look like. Uh, this is one of my favorite looking ink bottles. I just think that these Visconti bottles look pretty cool. They're pretty functional, just the way that they focus the ink down here to the bottom, so you could pretty much use every last drop or get close to it uh, when the ink uh, when the ink gets a little bit low in the bottle. But I love these bottles. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, these Visconti gold nibs uh, are very nice. I have tested a couple of them. Uh, you can get a decent line variation out of it, even though it is a fine nib. Um, and I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of scratchy fine nibs, and I don't find these to be scratchy at all. Um, the uh, I've tested some of the the extra fines and the fines, and I'm really liking these nibs. Uh, in regard to ink flow that it's not starved at all in regard to some reverse writing. It's a little scratchy, but it does just fine. In regard to some fast writing, there's no issues whatsoever. So here we have the Visconti Watermark Rainbow. Uh, I think that this is an excellent addition to the Visconti lineup. Uh, I just think this thing looks gorgeous. This is one of those pens that if you pull it out and show it to someone, then their jaw is gonna drop. Uh, and it's, it's a pen that people are gonna want to like examine just because it just looks so cool. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.